Welcome to the Spurs 9501 podcast. From Kane to the lane, the final say on all things Tottenham. Here are your hosts, Steve, Ray, Cam and Jam. The Spurs 9501 podcast. Uh, after we're doing a post match review after the Chelsea defeat. This is Ray in London. I've got Cam in Florida, Jam in Connecticut, and welcome back to Steve in London. Welcome back, Hello, Steve. Everybody. Good to see you again. Nice so I'll just you, quickly guys. go. Th- Sorry, yeah. I'll just quickly go through the teams and then I'll ask Cam to do the uh, the stats. So we had Larice in goal, Emerson Royal at right back. We had Romero and Dyer in the centre with Reguilon at left back. And then in the midfield, we had uh, Hoybier, Gondombele, Lo Celso, and up front, Kane, Ali, and Delhi. although Delhi was playing in the field as well. So that was the team. Cam, over to you for some uh, very unpleasant stats. I know what the stats are going to be like with Chelsea. Stats for Chelsea are never going to be good. They've been a team that we haven't really played very well against overall um, from since the first game in 1909. We've lost 74 times, drawn 41 times, and won 51 times. So... We probably, long before any of us were born, had quite a good run against Chelsea. But in our lifetime, it's not been the case. And it really shows when you look at the stats from the Premier League since the inception of the Premier League. We've lost 32 times, drawn 20 times and only won seven times. Chelsea have scored 106 goals against Tottenham. They've scored more goals against Tottenham than any other Premier League team since the Premier League's inception. Um, And today was no difference, uh, of course. Stats today were, we had 47% of the possession, they had 53. Apparently, we had eight shots today. They had 20. I can't remember eight shots. Same my life. <laughs> Two on target for us, 10 for them, uh, five corners for us, 11 for them. And um, finally, we only committed four fouls and they committed 15. So that, that also shows what kind of intensity we had as a team. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Cam. Steve, let me come to you now first. Um, what did you think of the formation that uh, Nuno put out? I thought the formation was okay, to be honest. Um, I think his options were limited because he didn't have um, Bergwijn. Um, he didn't have Moira. Um, so I think he probably did the best he, the best he could. Um, it, I, I don't think this was a game about what was the best formation, whether who was going to win it, whether we um, you know, played five at the back or four at the back or however, however we played it. I think the reality is that you know, Chelsea are a better team than us um, individually. Um, however, we held our own in the um, uh, in the first half, and indeed, I think I don't know what the stats were for the first half possession, but I suspect they were closer than they were for the overall game. Um, and whilst we didn't make clear cut chances, we got into positions where we could have done, you know, where we could have crossed, we could have laid it back, and so on. So. I was quite pleased with the first half. But in terms of the formation, Ray, I mean, I'm not sure what else he could have done, really, with the players that were available to him. Okay, Thanks, Steve. Jam, what's your thoughts on the formation and uh, generally the first half? Uh, First half, uh, we played really well. Um, You know, there's there's clearly a lot still to to come from the team. I feel like there's a lot of... um, There needs to be a little more chemistry. I noted that, like in Dombele and Los Celso, they need to click more. They need to be more, have more interchanging plays. But um, there, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good things to take away from the first half. Um, unfortunately, second half can't be said, can't say the same thing about that. But um, there's just a, like 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 Steve said, there was not much else he could have done. Um, and honestly, that team that did start, I think, is probably our strongest team if everyone is you know fully fit, playing at their best, uh, at their best potential. But a lot of them are not there yet. And uh, I think there's also a lot to be said for a lot of these players not having played together long enough yet. You know, the chemistry isn't there. Okay. Cam, do you agree with Jam? Do you think that's our strongest team that we can actually put out? I think with what we had available, I would probably have to go along with that. I mean, the only thing you would think is, you know, if you haven't got Moira and you haven't got Bergwijn, why are you not playing Gil? Because uh, I think that would have made a big difference. He has speed. He does. He does run a lot. And I think when he came on. I, he was probably one of the few players that actually tried to do something. Uh, that would be the only thing I would say. I think the problem for me is is you know when we start talking about how well we did in the first half, we start sounding like a relegation team because they all do well in the first half. It's a game. You know, it's a game of ninety minutes. I mean, I mean, it's totally meaningless how well you do yeah. in the first half. 
because the big teams come to start playing really properly when the other team just completely runs out of steam. And if we are that kind of team, like the Norwiches or whatever of this world, right, that, that's run out of steam and all look back and say, well, didn't we do so well in the first half? Then, you know, we might as well get used to the fact that we ain't going nowhere. My biggest problem of all with this whole game plan with Nuno uh, is talking about it is that I don't think he ha actually knows how to get his teams to score. Um, and I don't believe that if we carrying on with the way that he's playing and the way that he's laid out his team or how he's instructing them, where are the goals going to come from? Where are the goals going to come from? Um, and the first half huffed, puffed, great possession. But, you know, I don't think we had a shot on target, did we? Anyone remember a shot on target in the first half? I'm not sure they did either, though, in the first yeah. half. I mean, doesn't matter some... to them because they had about mm -hmm. 20 in the second. True. Yeah, but the thing True. is, I mean, Nuno did have a plan, didn't he? He put um, Sun up against Thiago, etc. We had some chances, you know, some good play. As Steve said, I think we came out of the blocks really well, played well. And, um, but... I just can't, Steve. Do you know why Harry Kane is always taking all the free kicks? I mean, that looked like a Lo Celso better scenario for me in the top left. Oh, I don't know who the hell you give the free kicks to. We used to even to Christian Eriksen, and he never got scored either, really, did he? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might as well give it to Dyer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, can can a non Don, Don Blay not take a free kick as well? I mean, he's he's technically well. I think it's enough to get him on the pitch to actually play. But let, yeah. we'll come on to Don Blay in a minute. I mean, okay. I mean, well, we huffed and puffed in the first half, and we pressed them, and we did well, and we looked reasonable, man. But we weren't able to score, were we, Jam? So, who does the lay, Who do we lay the blame on for that? Son and Kane. They're our goal scorers. If they don't score, I don't see where the where the goals are coming from. I mean, absolutely. In all the other matches throughout the season, I would say they are our goal scorers. They should be scoring, but we can't just rely on both of them all the time. There's a lot of other players on the pitch who need to be doing more uh, going forward. And and just like XD said, there's opportunities to cross the ball, cut it back, do something where we just we, we left around and passed the ball back and went back and sideways, and then ended up just going back into the defense and trying to find a space. Um, hmm. You know, it didn't it didn't click today. And on top of that, I mean, we're playing Chelsea probably the best put together team in the league, you know, in every position, they've got excellent, excellent players. And they, they proved that with their substitutions today. I mean, that's the, the game changed in the second half. It was not the same game and our players could not find a way through. Um, on top of that, there's just the, Harry Kane looks like someone who doesn't really seem yeah. like he's bothered. You know, I was going to come, I was going yeah, to no, come on to that too with Steve, actually see if he actually, but carry on, Jim. You no, know, it's, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that needs to be addressed and you know we <laughs> we will rely on our big players like son and kane as we should because those are every team relies on their big players but when one of them is like you know only half there half trying um i didn't see him get into the box once today you know i, I just I mean, didn't yep yeah. i mean we'll come on to the second half in a few minutes but the biggest thing for me was at half time, you know, Tuchel made some decisions to turn it around and it made the changes. Like he could bring a World Cup winner on with Kante and we had to bring Skip on, etc. No disrespect to Skip. So, Kamal, don't you think that we're being a bit harsh on Tottenham, that we're never really expected to win this match? Chelsea well, on a really different level to us with the squad strength. Like Jam said, they've got two people for each position. They're much stronger than us. Didn't we just get the results that probably we was, was expected? Why are we all upset about this? Because I think it's the way that we capitulated. I think that if we had um, been out there, played to our full potential, then I think that everyone, if we'd lost, I don't know, 5-3, we would have probably been happier. If we'd at least tried to show some spark in front of goal, we would have been happier. We did try in the first half, though, didn't we? We, did we didn't get any shots in on goal. I, I mean, mean Son, Son, had a, Son had a shot. I mean, it was a run to, that was, yeah. Yeah, I was one shot from someone from Kane, both outside the area, not very good. Now, my point that I want to make here, the reason why we're so upset here is because I don't believe that Nuno has an understanding of how to, of who his transitional player is. Who's the player that's taking the ball <clears throat> from defensive midfield and trying to make some passes forward and get Kane and Son into the game? Is it Delhi? Well, he plays too deep. Where does Ndombele was playing today? Was it him? I didn't see it. Who is it? Is it La Celso? I mean, you've got three of these players who could probably, to some extent, play that kind of role, but they were all playing a very defensive role. So where were the goals? I'll say it again. Where are the goals coming from? If we can't provide anything to our front players against a team like Chelsea who can close you off so so well. I mean, you know, Thiago Silva 
didn't didn't play fantastically well, but he's probably man of the match for them. He played out of his skin. He had two shots on target more than he's had, I think, all season, including last season, which is ridiculous against Tottenham. So where is that coming from? And I think this is the failing um, of Nuno. He has no understanding of how to get this team to score goals. Well, or, let me come back to or create me, clear chances. But Steve, I mean, it's just, it can be a bit harsh there on Nuno because he can only play with what he's got. I mean. Is, I mean, has he got an attacking central attacking midfielder like Ericsson that he can put in there? Well, he can only I do mean, with whatever he's got. I think you're absolutely right, but I would push Ndombele up. The problem is that Ndombele was getting the ball far too deep. He's getting in the centre of midfield. If if he gets to, you know, within striking distance of the 18-yard box, that's where you want him yeah. because he's got the skills, he's got the tricks. If he loses the ball there, it's not as important if he loses it in the last third of our own, our own um, half. So I think he should be pushing, pushing up further, making those runs into the box, making things happen. Cam says, or we all say, you know, Son and Kane should be scoring. They should be, but we have to give them some chances. And we didn't that really give happen. them any chances. That's the mm. issue. And they're not players. Maybe Son, but Kane doesn't make chances by hustling and bustling. He doesn't do what Sahar and Io, I think it is, did against us in the last game um, playing for Crystal Palace, where they run us ragged oh. by their sheer energy and their persistence and their niggleliness. We, we, we go far too much respect to Chelsea. When you, I think tactics can only take you so far. We, we need players who are going to compete on a one-to-one -one level with, each, with the other team. And we didn't do that. We weren't competing. I remember when Chelsea were utter rubbish and they'd yeah. come to what they tended to call three-point lane, They'd come to White Hart Lane and Dennis Wise would get in your face and he would um, annoy you no end and you'd get frustrated and you'd go off that pitch exhausted, bruised from head to toe. I'm not saying that's exactly how we should play, but I want I wanted those Chelsea players to go off. They might have won 3-0 knowing they'd been in a fight, that they'd had a real tough game and they're not going to do that, are they? They're going to stroll in there, get their ear, ear pads on, listen to their music and have a jolly nice evening. Whereas we're going to be crying into our beer or whatever. And, and that, that's the long and the short of it, I think, is that we've got to compete on an individual level when the tactics aren't right and when you're not as good a team as the other one. You can compete even if you're not as good as you didn't do that. Jam, um, let's start with the goals then. So the first goal, you know, from the header, from the corner, I mean, lots of people are saying Deli Ali should have been marking Thiago. What's your take on, on the first goal? I mean, marking him would have been. Uh, he, I definitely noticed after that goal happened, he was on him really tightly every corner. He didn't but, jump. Um, him. No, he didn't jump. But he, he wasn't. He was. He was holding the center. You know, the the penalty spot and waiting for someone to come in. And you know, Thiago did an excellent run. I mean, it was a bigger, maybe stronger, you know, player than Dele Alli might have been able to stand up and and jump up and hit and get a header on that. But you know, that's what happens when when he's he's your man in the middle and he just came across Thiago. I think it was unlucky. I think it was unlucky. You know, he he could have done better, but these things happen. I think from on uh, onwards, we could have played a lot better and picked it up a lot more. And finally, once we did start to get some energy in the game and and start to build up, you know, they scored that crazy. I wouldn't say crazy. It was it was poor defending. It was poor defending. Hoyberg, Rosselso, both of them could have closed down Conte for that second goal. Yep. Cam, I mean, was that just bad luck the first goal, or was Delhi, uh, you know, culpable there for not jumping at least putting a challenge in? Tiago basically had a free header, didn't he? Well, let's 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 go let's go back a little bit on this. The first thing is, is anybody here actually believed we could have ever scored from a corner? Uh, no. Yeah, so we're actually when so when they get when we get a corner, we're worried they're going to break out and probably score against us. Uh, they, they the fact that they could score from a corner so easily from the penalty spot by ghosting in like he did with everyone just stood stationary like chess pieces waiting for someone to tell them to move um, was just uh, probably. High school marking, I would say. High school defense. I mean, you know, the basic coaching will teach you. You watch for the player, the runner. You know, you have your, your strongest player on him. There was Dyer was there. Delhi was there. Delhi didn't jump. Yeah, she got in Dyer's way, to be honest with you. But nobody was tracking that run. And, you know, it's the first thing that you do when, when you're defending at this level. And my concern, seriously, is, is that if um, we're going to hang a hat on being a very defensive team, which you know all the time I've been watching Tottenham never ever have been, um, then the, you make basic errors like that. The, 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 even that, that whole strategy goes out the window, doesn't it? I mean, because it was a basic error. I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone says. It was a very, very basic error. 
to 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 concede a goal like that. Um, I mean, Nuno in his in a post match was really upset about the defending from the corners, saying it's a big mistake. So obviously he's not happy about that as well. <laughs> not much good to us, is it? Because no. he's hung his hat on defence because he doesn't know how to get his team to score. Uh, Steve, the second goal, Lo Celso mistake. Remember, we said we all say that it always starts from a mistake. The second goal, yeah. the first mistake was Lo Celso, and then the second was Hoiberg didn't close him down. What's your take on the second one? Well, you've you've, you've summed it up, haven't you? Lo Celso had the opportunity to clear. He's trying mm -hmm. to either dribble or clear or um, make a little neat little pass on the um, uh, just outside the eighteen yard box. When I'm afraid it's uh, you just get the ball away in that situation. That's what you have to do. And yes, we didn't close the player down. People are shrieking that we should. I think it took a terrible deflection yep, yep. Uh, and went in and may not have gone in if the deflection um, hadn't taken place. But it, it, it ends up being a percentage game, doesn't it? If you shoot enough, you're going to get a yeah. deflection. It's a bit like but the first Steve, goal. They got as well. You, yeah, Steve, can I just ask you a quick question? Sorry. just So in that type of situation, if somebody's shooting the defender's in line, should the defender try and block it or should he just put, jump over it or the goal? No, they've, the got, goal they've, got, they've got to try and block it because okay. nine times okay. out of ten, it won't be deflected into mm -hmm. goal. It'll be deflected well, somewhere else. Now, as a defender, you've got to do it. I think what you, if you're uncertain or not determined, that's when you get that slight deflection that takes it into the goal. If you are okay. hurling yourself yeah. at it. So towards the end of the game, actually, Skip made a very good blocking tackle on Lukaku in the penalty area because he was utterly committed. You know, I, I, whatever you say about Skip, he was um, he is completely committed and he's, he's trying all the time. So he blocked that and it went off, I think, for, for a throw in or a corner. Whereas if you go in a bit half heartedly and we've got quite a few players who do that, not the whole Bjergberg normally does that, then I think you're more likely to get a little nick, a little deflection that could take it into the goal. It's where there's that, you know, that uncertainty. And just, just mm -hmm. coming back about the percentages and seeing the first goal, I think that was something like the third corner they'd had in two or three minutes. Mm. And I think at some stage, uh, if you take corner after corner, there's one that you're not going to be able to defend. It will just mm -hmm. be that is just going to be the case. You're expecting every all the team to be fully concentrating and prepared. And we know that the best players in the world lose a bit of concentration. Um, and I think that's sort of what happened for the first goal. The second goal, the Celso should have cleared it. The third goal, I think I'd, I'd, I'd lost interest by then, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Cam, I then. yeah, I mean, the third goal, talk up through the third goal. I mean, it's just like they had so many chances before, it's like a training match, they just <laughs> shooing at will. I mean, is that anybody, anybody saw uh Werner with that much space on that far side? It was unbelievable. It was like the players were all st st staring at each other. I mean, he, he couldn't believe how much time he had, he didn't know what to do whether to shoot go further into the box. In the end, he passed it right to the penalty spot. And again, and again, it was just passing by chess pieces. They were all stationary and they stood there and really got a defender, put it in the corner. This is the guy we tried to sign earlier in the season, I believe. There's no way he's ever coming to Tottenham now. Um, as they said, just add a few more notes to, 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 his, um, to his salary after that because we made, it, we made them look very good. In the first half, we made them look ordinary, but... What, I think what we're missing here, Ray, is not the three goals, is the other three or four goals they could have had or should have had. If yeah, Werner too had to it, talk about Werner, Werner. I mean, that Werner goal, which was probably one of the best chances of the whole match. Um, Kovacic Kovacic, had the chance. Yeah. I mean, I don't there want was, to spend too much talking about their chances. I know they had no, plenty of chances. But I mean, talk, well, the really made a flattering score. Well, Lorraine's made a great save from Alonso as well, didn't he? Yeah. But let's not dwell too much on that. We were well beaten today. But what is it? How do we move forward from here? This is what I want to know, Jam. What do we do to move forward? Nuno's been in the job. Surely it's too early to talk about Nuno out. I mean, what should we be doing, Jam? I think I think it's important. Uh, if we had come to this match beating Crystal Palace beforehand, you know, this this loss wouldn't have been so bad. It would have been expected. We were all expected to lose against Chelsea. They are, you know, a much better team than us currently. Um, but it, it didn't. It came after a terrible loss against Palace. Uh, a poor midweek performance against, you know, in, in the, the Confederations. Mediocre. Yeah, the mediocre yeah. European League, yeah. shall we call it. Um, and honestly, you know, it was coming. And um, I, I don't I don't know. I want to see more more. I just want to see more. I want to see more from all the players. I feel like the only players actually playing for places are are the new ones. The Royal, he played really well today. Uh, Gil, when he came on, he was excellent. Um, you know, I don't know. Los Celso, Romero, they didn't do enough for me today. Romero looked okay. He was okay. 
but I would have preferred Sanchez there after seeing the performances he gave, you know, in the first few matches of the season. Um, you know, there's just there's a lot more to be given by those players, and they're not doing enough for us. Okay, Steve. I mean, where do we go from here, Steve? I mean, Nuno is a goalkeeper, so we've all heard he's a much vaunted defensive coach. But there's one stat that I think Cam missed out, which was the first time we've lost two goals by three nil in the league for God for, for first time ever, I think. So, I mean, where is this much vaunted defensive coach? What's happening? Well, uh, it's obviously not there for the last two games. I, I mean, I think you've got to look at this in the round in that our three one nil wins were pretty Good. close. Um, and we were fortunate probably against Man City. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure that our, our defensive performances in the first three games were any any good really against that level of opposition um i think he's got to work with what he's got i think it's becoming apparent that kane doesn't want to be there we know that he's sort of sulking trotting about uh he's not doing what we want i've got a terrible feeling that we when we sell him in january that we've probably lost 30 million on his value um, had we sold him in the summer um but he's, everybody moment. said he's a consummate professional. He's going to keep playing and scoring and he loves Tottenham. Doesn't that, what you're saying, Steve, go against what everybody else is saying? What's the reality? Well, you know, sometimes you have to be his side, side, his side right. the reality. Time. Well, all One I can time. do is, I, I, all I'm saying is from what I see. I agree with you, actually. Me, but anyway, he doesn't yeah. really look as if he's, he's busting a gut in order no. to, um, you know, to pull the team round. And you contrast that with, I, actually, having said all that, I don't think Lukaku had a particularly... Good but game. that's because of fact, Eric Dyer. Well, I thought Eric Dyer did very well. There was one point where he backed off too much and could have nicked the ball and didn't. But, you know, one mistake against Lukaku in a, in 90 minutes is no, pretty D- good. Dyer saved a certain goal from Alonso as well with his yeah. chest. So I think he had a good game. So, Cam, I yeah. mean... Oh, sorry, Steve, did you want to say something else? No, no, I just... It's, it's where, where do we go from here? We have to work yeah, with... Yeah, so where do we go? Off. I think he's got to put... Uh, I think Ndombele's got to be pushed up the field. Um, and I think you've got to play skip as well. If you have skip behind Ndombele and then you know choose your choose the other midfielders after that really but Ndombele's got to be up there he's got to make runs into the um 18 yard box and cause some mayhem and that's not what's happening uh, cam uh what is it too early to say Nuno I mean how long do you think Nuno's got to turn this around before people start saying well look what's going on here um November I think that if we lose against Arsenal which looks like we probably will um uh, then I think they're, they're going to start calling for his head already. I mean, the problem that we've got here, guys... We can't get anyone else, come on. No, we can't. But, I mean, we're better off well, having Mason's nobody available. else. We're better off having nobody else. I mean, the problem that we've got here is what we seem to be papering over is in his last three, first three games, Nuno, um, well, we scored three goals. In his last three games, we've conceded eight goals. Eight yeah. goals. Um and that is not good at all. I mean, that's we, you've got three teams in there, okay? You've got Chelsea, should have been 6 0, should have been a bit more. But Ran, they weren't the best team in the world, I'm sure. They're the, you know, I mean, we go to France, we can't beat a media, middle of the table French team. Um, Crystal Palace, I mean, it was funny, isn't it, how Liverpool can go to Palace and win 3 0. We go there, we lose 3 0. So, what does it say about Tottenham? We've got an Arsenal next. Uh, who are a resurgent right now. We're going to um, the Emirates. They probably can't wait for this game. And I think after that, we've got to ask, it's not about losing all these games. That's not the issue here. It's the fact that there is no strategy or ability in the team to be able to... to firstly, it was all, we're a great defensive team. Well, that's gone out of the window. Eight goals in three games. But where are the goals coming from? I keep saying this, Ray, all the time. I've said this to you. Yeah, it's getting it's boring now. It's getting boring. But where are they? We lost Bail. He gave us 16 <laughs> last year. You Where are they making chances? chances? You can't score without making but, chances. But didn't I say, though, right at the beginning, Steve, that we've got no player that knows how to transition the ball in from defence into the into attack? We've got nobody but, behind but, the two front Hold on a second, Cam. So isn't that a fault of Levy and Paratici? They should have got somebody in that can do that in the transfer but window. They got us a right, hold on. They got us a right back when we've all got Tanganga, we've got Doherty. Yeah. Did we really need another right back for 30 no. million? I'm not sure. No. You know, and the central defense, okay, Romero's coming, we've got Sanchez, Dyer, etc. They didn't, is that, that's not Nuno's fault that they didn't get him like a creative midfielder that can you, transition? Well, they bought him Brian Gill. They, they, they bought in. He's uh, not they a transition. Not, no, he shouldn't. But they didn't bring in a player, but didn't Nuno have anything to say about this? 
I mean, obviously fact- not. Obviously not. Nuno is not. He's just a coach. He's a head coach at Tottenham. He's not right. doing anything else. So when we get rid of the Celso, we thought the Celso was going to do that. Didn't okay, we? so this is a different issue now. So the, the players the we thought could do it can't actually do it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I don't believe that they're being used in the right way by Nuno. I don't know if Nuno knows how to get those players to play that that role that we need them to play, that 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 creative midfield role. I mean, you're right, La Celso and Dombele, uh, Delhi. What was Delhi? Delhi was never brought into the team as a defensive midfielder. What the hell well, what is he do, doing? What, 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 how did you think Delhi played today? Awful. Where was he playing? What was he playing? I don't know. I mean, that's my question too. What what role was he actually playing? Was he in a defensive midfield role? Oh, or was he was he in attacking he, midfield? I have no idea. A, yeah, he was no, meant to be in the bottom of the diamond or something. Yeah, it's well, clearly, we don't it's know. Been, yeah. Or he's been told to, to play that way, though. You know, obviously he's not pushing forward. I didn't see him move into the final third at all. Uh, there's, like I said, there's a reason. Nuno's, Nuno's making this happen. There's yeah, no, there's no midfield. Nuno's the game, the game plan is defend, kick the ball up to the strikers if you can, counter attack. You know, and I don't think that's going to work. With, with but Jam, Kane when he got appointed, we knew what type of coach he was at Wolves. Why are we all, all of a sudden surprised that we don't make any chances and we're not scoring goals? Can somebody we tell never me were. That? I never wanted him in the first place. Let me yeah, know. I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure we're surprised. I think we hope that it wouldn't be that way. <laughs> yep, mm. yep, that's it. But guys, how are we going to move forward from here? You know, we got Arsenal next week, probably going to lose that. They'll be on the same points as us. Steve, yeah. let me come to you. Realistically, what are we looking at this this season? Now, we might all say Nuno out, Nuno out, but that's not actually going to help us because nobody's yeah. going to join. Ryan Mason will probably take over and he'll be just playing his mates like he did last time. Well, I mean, what, what happens is people think by changing the manager, somehow players who are completely mediocre suddenly become good players and they don't. You, know, you can only tinker with the general so much. If the arm is no good, the arm is no good. He's only um, been there for five ma- matches, for God's yeah, sake. You know, no, you've, you've got, got to give to, him some time. I think you've, got to, you've got to give him some time. I, th- I actually thought in the first half, we, that was the way we should be playing. We were, we, were press, we were pressing them. They were uncomfortable on the ball. Okay, we may not have made a load of chances, but at least they knew they were in a game. And that's so how why did it play. change in the second half then, Steve? What happened in the second half I to change? Ran, I think we ran out of puff. I think we did okay, run so out of So it's a fitness puff. issue then. Well, well maybe, but also it's about how you use your subs, isn't it? You've got to know when to bring on people like Skip, who are going to be really hard working. And I think without Bergwijn and Moira, who whatever you think of Bergwijn, I'm Moira, I've got loads of time for forever for obvious reasons. But they are tireless players, and they really do put in a stint. And they will press, they will press, and they will make players other the other team uncomfortable. Um, and we didn't have that. You know, we had Ali who doesn't really do that and Dombele who doesn't really do that. Well, what does Ali you do? Know? I mean, it's a good question by Ken. What was he actually doing today? What's his role? Well, and that's got to be down trying, to Nuno, isn't he? trying to get him to be a creative player, isn't he? But he, he dwells too much on the ball and he can't pass it. Whereas Ndombele could. So why I couldn't understand why Ndombele got taken off and Ali didn't. Because he played on Thursday. He was tired. Jam, I what's imagine. the way forward here now then? Come on, Jam. Tell us the way forward. And it's not, <laughs> I want I'm, some I'm real gonna, ideas. So we're not just say, saying, oh, we'll keep trying and we'll keep trying. Tell us no. what to do. I mean, honestly, I think I think I want to see a match where Deli Ali doesn't start and never does Harry Kane. I think that, I mean, we're not in that situation anymore because we lost Bergwijn and we lost... But we Lucas. haven't got another striker. No, I wanted to see a front three attacking three or like we saw in the first three matches where there was full out blitz attacks when we had opportunities to attack with yeah, Mora, with, with Mora and Bergwijn rushing and attackers yeah. and, Son. And, and, and Son in the middle. I don't want to see Kane play for a few matches. You know, I don't think he's 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 come back, he's played two or three matches and looked absolutely uninterested. And I don't well, want to, you know. Cam, Jam is saying Kane's not interested. Steve is saying that he's not getting the service so he can't score. What's what's happening here? What, what's right? Cam? I think we should play him I think they're both right, and that proves the point of Kane. In, we're now in the middle of September in game five games. He hasn't scored one goal yet for Tottenham. Um, and that that in itself, for someone who was the... Uh, in the league, he, he, he scored in the Mickey Mouse Cup. Well, in the league, he hasn't scored as yet. You're right, but he was golden boot last season, and mm. this season he's going to have the lead boot if he carries on like this. Uh, yeah, we're getting our golden boot. Jan's absolutely right uh, um, in the sense that we need something to change drastically, and Nuno needs to show some metal and some uh, of who's in charge. Otherwise, he's going to be shown the door very quickly. Because I can very much assure you, um, he was bought in uh, on, on a gamble. He was given a, a two-year contract, which is not very long. He was given not that much money. 
Um, I don't believe that uh, Levy and the fans will put up with it much longer. If we lose to Arsenal, you'll, you'll see people calling for his head. I don't believe that if Kane has no service and is not interested, because normally Kane would have dropped deep and provided the service, he wasn't doing hardly any of that either. Yeah, but Steve, the, the rumours are that Paolo Fonseca was all ready to go, and then Paratici comes in and says, no, I want Nuno. So if Nuno's go, aren't we in effect, Paratici's got to go as well because it's his choice. I think there's always a clear out, isn't there? If you get rid of the, uh, uh, the yeah. you know, the top person, then people who are associated with him are going to go. I, I mean, I, I don't think that we're back to my other analogy. We're just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. If you change, <laughs> if you if you change the that. manager, I love that one. I think yeah, that's I a mean, great one. But I think you're right, <laughs> Cam. I don't know what getting rid of another manager is going to do when you can't yeah, get anybody else. Time, unless yeah. you're going to, unless you're going to go for Conti. No, what, you know what's happening here is. Um, the beauty of this is, is with game five, our season's already over. I mean, that is the reality that we're looking at here, right? We're going to get knocked out. out. We're We're looking at our top 10, our season as a team. You know, we all start the season thinking, you know, this is, we could get back up there. We can be in the top four. We can be top six. We're going to do something, right? Every single one of us know the season's already over after five games. And that is what the problem is, isn't it? Because you're going to start losing a lot of the fans, a lot of the enthusiasm that was built up in the in the Pochettino years, and the whole thing about the stadium and stuff. Where do we not go? Not just where do we go from after Nuno? Where do we go as a team in the next few years? Financially, we're not viable to to yeah. to, to stay out out of Europe with a stadium like that. So there are big structural problems at Tottenham, and I think it's going to come back down to what everyone's been saying: is we need a change of ownership. Now. That may well be right, but uh, turn into Jam, an NFL stadium. Yeah. Well. Jam, let me ask you a question, Jam. If we get rid of Nuno and we get rid of Paratici, Levy's just going to say, "Look, you said get a director of football. I got him. We hired the wrong guy. We're back to square one. I'm going to take over again." Isn't that what's going to happen? I mean, it, it's like what I just said. The, it comes down to the same problem that's been, you know, with this club for the last at least six years. You know, that we had some good seasons, but uh, it, it's 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 the NIC man. It's a levy out brigade, and it, and it has been for a long, long time. It's been even since Pochettino was around. It was a levy out brigade, and and it's it's clear. I mean, this whole stance of Harry Kane, and I, I keep coming back to him because I mean, you know, he is our star player. He's the player we rely on. You look at Man United; they got three or four star players they rely on. Look at Chelsea; they got five, six star players they rely on. You know, Man City; their whole team is is full of stars. We have Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son, and Son plays consistently tries his best every time you see a smile on his face and he's trying to play football even if he doesn't play well yeah. harry kane has not been there he has not been there on on the pitch he's he's he, i don't know it's really, me, really sad to see let me try and stick and up for that why didn't, wait, no, no, why didn't we sell him for 100 100 million 120 million to, i would have happily taken point. three really good players in his place Jam, let me come to that point let me try i'm not sticking for daniel levy's point of view if he'd have got the money that he wanted, whether that's 130, 150, he would have sold Kane. That's what he said. So give me what I think he's worth and I'll sell him. He didn't get it. So he's still here. He appointed Paratici. Paratici appointed Nuno. And it's just like, you know, how can you blame that all on Daniel Levy? But I, like you said, it's been five matches. You can't really blame this on Paratici and, or, or Nuno. No, it's been, it has not been long enough. Cam because is saying if he loses against Arsenal, he's probably going to go. Because there's structural I don't think he's going to go, though. I don't believe that. Club. I mean, the problem that you're looking at is the structural problems at the this is, There isn't this enough is still a transitional season. Hold no on, one at a time, guys. Right. This is a transitional okay. season, I was just saying. like At the beginning of the season, at most, if we're lucky, we're going to squeeze into the top four. But realistically, we all know top seven is where we're top going 10, for. Top ten, I think. You're realistically. Top now, ten. Let me get... Yeah, no, 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 this is before the season started. Okay, okay. Exactly. Listen, so we, you guys were happy before the season started to finish top ten. You don't think that's still potential? We've got... A, I had a bad start to the season there, Steve. Where, possible. where do we go here from here, Steve? Tell me what your ideal scenario is. Ideal scenario is that Nuno is uh, able to transform this team into a, a swashbuckling team of winners. Um, and I think that's highly unlikely. Um, but I don't think changing the manager is going to um, massively alter things. I have to agree with you. I don't think changing the yeah. manager is going to do it because there's nobody else available that can actually make a difference. And uh, you're not going to change the players. Uh, yeah, exactly. The players, the players have the skills and... Um, uh, you know, commitments that they have. They're not going to change overnight. But, uh, Cam, right, Cam, I, Cam yes. let me ask you a question first before you go in your comment. Why do we need uh, Doherty, Tanganga, Royal, three right backs? Tell me who's making those decisions. Will you spend 30 million on the right back? 
Yeah, I mean, you make a valid point. However, we have we have Doherty, who's a very poor quality right back. We have Tanganga, who's really a centre back and not really a right back, and want rather playing in defence and probably could do the. Plus, we had Aurier at the time we bought Royal. We Aurier. did, uh, and so if we were going to get if Aurier, thought he was better than he was, and he tore up his contract himself. God knows why. But potentially, can I, I'll be totally honest with you. I haven't seen any of those uh, right backs put in the crosses that Aurier used to put in. But having said fair. that, we had three or four people for that position. That was not the area we needed strengthening. So who's making the decisions to buy a right back rather than a created midfielder? Oh, well, uh, I mean, it's a very good question. And I, yeah. I think if Nuno's not making those decisions, then Nuno's really, uh, um, what, what is he doing at the club? The reason why I think that Nuno is involved in it and why these decisions are bad, because looking at his decision when we're 3-0 down to take off Romero and put on Sanchez, uh, which butter baffled every single human I being. Think Romero I think, was I think Romero got Croatia. cramp, actually. Yeah. I think he got cramp, so he had to go. Three there. minutes to go. Well, I mean, come on. We have, we, there, there is some serious problem more than right back at the club. My point that I'm trying to make, Ray, which you won't let me make, is um, we've got the problem here. It's, it's a fundamental problem. There's a structural problem. We've got no money. We need a billionaire. We need Steve. We get to 100 win. million a year from TV money. Not enough. They've uh, they still owe the Bank of England 150 million. Um, we've got a tight assed owner who won't put any money into the club. Um, and and let, how are we going to compete when Man United, Liverpool, Ch Chelsea, and 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 the City can pay 100 million without even thinking about it for a player, and we struggle to get anyone at 20, 30 million? Um, and uh, um, uh, most players don't want to come to us. I mean, look at all the players that we were associated with. Good midfield players, good players that were out there that were ready to come. The one club they didn't want to come to was Tottenham. We bought, we bought Brian Hill, we bought Romero, we bought Emerson Royal. We bought three good players. Signings. I think they're good signings. So why is it, have they not very, made? Give them time. Then they've got to make. Give them okay, time to make a we'll difference. Give them time, but there's still that role about where do the goals come from? None of those players are bringing you the goals. Yeah, well, this is my question. I'm coming to you. Is who's to blame for the not making sure that we had a backup striker for Kane? Well, uh, Nuno and Paratici. Okay. Steve, what do you think? I mean, firstly, we haven't got a backup for Kane. Secondly, you know, we haven't got a transition like that. You know, this creative midfielder we all talk about. What realistically can we achieve without those key positions? Well, we're mid-table, aren't we? Um, that's that's the best we can do. Mid-table and a cup run. That's... But there's nothing different. That's all we've got to look if, forward to. I'm if afraid. we wanted mid-table and a cup run, why don't we just keep Jose then? Yeah, or Pochettino. Um, yeah, because no, I, mean, I would I think say if we, if, we, we, if we had a choice between any of those three managers now, we'd go for Pochettino, wouldn't we? That's yeah, real, yeah. But even uh, with jo Jam, let me ask you, Jam. Even with Jose last year, even when we played badly, we still made chances. I think we had chances to score in certain games. We, 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 did more, we did have more chances, didn't we? Yeah, Jose was definitely not as bad as a manager as we gave him credit to be. Um, there's a lot of issues in that dressing room which have now been resolved. You know, I feel like a lot of those players that have left are the the more the more difficult attitudes. Um, and look at him now at Roma; he's doing perfectly fine. Well, five matches in, he's top of the league. I mean, it's early six. days, and six whatever. He um, won six matches in a row. Yeah, yeah. he's doing per he's doing perfectly yeah. well. Doing Seems well. like his players are listening to him. But the, yeah. on the flip side of that, look at look at Eric Dyer this season compared to last season. He's a completely different player. He's, he's actually player, a, a competent. Though. He's a competent defender. You know, our, our backline are a lot more competent in general. And um, I mean, that, that's got to come down to management, right? We, we we've lost it, yeah, but there's, there's no midfield. There's no midfield. Our midfield is destroyed. Okay, guys. Okay, we could talk about this forever. And I think <laughs> we could. All, we could. Disagree, but we let's could. talk about next week now, Steve. I'm going to come to you. What is your prediction? What's going to happen next week against the Woolwich Arsenal? Well, first of all, they are not Chelsea. Mm. They are nowhere near um, at Chelsea's level. And I think we can win this. And I think we'll win it 2-0. Very good. I'm happy to see. I think I feel much more confident about okay. playing them than I do playing Chelsea. Okay, even though they're playing at home, we haven't won them for ten no, I'm years. Still, I'm still, I'm very, very confident. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Cam, what do you think is going to happen next week against Arsenal? Although they won two in a row, we've lost two in a row. Well, I think that Arsenal always raise their game to another level against Tottenham. Um, I think they've been the weaker team compared to us in the last four or five seasons. They've just finished below us. I think they see this season as their chance to, even though, to come above us. And I, do, I don't agree with Steve. I think it's going to be 2-0 to Arsenal. And the reason why I say that is because we don't know how to score goals. We've, got, we've, got, we've lost the touch. If, if Son 
dribbles the ball past six players and scores himself will get a goal. But will anyone pass the ball to him in a position where he has even a chance to take a shot? Not going to happen. He so had a pass today, a beautiful through ball from the Celso. He didn't put it away. No, OK, but, you know, that's, that's heavy one chance. Touch. Yeah, heavy yeah. first touch. Um, Jam? 2-0 to Arsenal. Oh, sorry, sorry, Cam. You're going to say 2-0 to Arsenal. OK, Jam? I'm never going to say Arsenal are going to beat us. So, and I'm fully on board with Steve. Chelsea, we all knew going into this, are, are yeah, they're European champions. They have the best team in the league. Even better than cities, I would say. You know, they really have a very fantastic football team. And um, we all knew we were going to lose that match. We're not going to lose against Arsenal. It might be a draw. I don't score. think we're going to play well. But we're not going to lose to them. Score? I'm going for 2-0 as well, Steve, to, to Tottenham. I think we're going to get a draw. I think it's going to go 1-1. I agree. Obviously, they're not as good as Chelsea. They've got holes. But they are playing quite well. And we're not playing well. Either. So I think we can get a draw there. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. This is the Spurs 9501 podcast. Uh, my thanks to Cam in Florida, Jam in Connecticut, Steve in London. This is Ray in London. We're a bit depressed at the moment, but then that's, as we always say, part of being a Tottenham fan is being depressed regularly every week. We'll hopefully see you on the next podcast. Thank you, everybody. Take care and bye-bye. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, on you Spurs. Yeah. You've been listening to the Spurs 9501 podcast. Stay in touch, continue the debate, and let us know what you want to discuss by finding us on YouTube. Tune in after the next match day for more insight. Thanks for listening.